team. And amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. 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 Amen.
let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Woo! And so we're here redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all this Thanksgiving season have a testimony? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I mean, yeah. a testimony yeah. that God has done a miracle. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I could Take the microphone all around this room tonight. Woo! Yeah, that's right. And every one of us here tonight, by the grace of God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Can share our testimony. Glory to God. Of what the Lord has done. Yes, sir. Let's take a few moments tonight on this Thanksgiving Eve. You know, some people are roaming to and fro, shopping, last year. Maybe relaxing, maybe at home. But here tonight we have come to say, God, you are worthy. Yes, Lord God. Woo. Yes, Lord. We love you more than a turkey. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We love you more than ham. Yes, we love you more than God. Yes, yes. We love you more than just being with our siblings and our family. Oh, yes. We want to be in the house of God. Yeah. You are worthy Thank you. 
encourage you, amen, to continue sowing, continue believing, and most of all, continue trusting amen. that God is your source. That's amen. right. Yes. He brings us resources, but he tests us sometimes. Mm. That's good, yeah. Because in those resources, and I know we've all fallen short of this, mm -hmm. yep. in those resources, whether they're people, whether they're things, yep. whether yep. they're stocks, whether they're bonds, whether they're retirement, whatever the source, the resource is, That's right. sometimes our attention gets more focused on the person who blessed us last time. Maybe they'll bless us again. Mm, mm. I know I've been guilty of that. Yeah, yeah. And God quickly oh, yeah. and swiftly removes the very person or the very thing that you depended on last time. Mm. And he says, not this time. All right, now. This time is from a different stream. This That's time right. is from a, a different avenue. Yeah. He says, why? Because I need you to look to me, mm. not to the resources I put before you. God gives us resources, and we are to manage those resources That's right. well and wise. Amen. But God always, if our attention gets short of Him, 
He will always redirect us. Yes. He will yeah. always guide us back yeah. to who yeah. he is and what he's doing and what he's doing in us yeah. as believers. Amen. And so through those tests, through those trials, I believe that God refines us. I believe he sharpens us. And I believe he brings us out to be pure as gold. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. gold comes out refined when it's gone through the fire. That's right. And so I believe tonight we are people who have been refined Ooh. by the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Through Amen. the fire of testing, God says, I will bring you out as pure gold. Yeah. Yeah. So tonight in your giving, amen, we're going to bless your seed tonight and know that every seed is a seed of faith. Amen. That's right. And we are continuing to um, yeah. We're continuing to believe God. We're believing by the first of the year, we're going to have all the monies collected for our goal, our end goal, which is to get um, an upgrade on our equipment. Amen. We um, we are believing God for that. Okay. We have some families in the house that have donated um, substantially amounts of money. We have about close to 1800 now. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Amen. Uh, we don't. We don't get discouraged. You know, we don't. It's. It may seem slow on, on our in our eyes, but God says everything is in my time. That's right. And so the Lord says also be anxious for nothing. Right. But in everything through prayer and thanksgiving, that all your requests you may know to the Lord, and that's exactly what we're doing as believers tonight, as a house and a church and a body of Christ. So keep on sowing. Keep on trusting God. It may not come when you want it. Right. But it'll come when you need it. That's right. Amen. So tonight, we're going to bless your seed. Amen. Bow your heads and your hearts with me. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord. We trust you, Lord, in every aspect of our lives. And Lord, forgive us if we've taken our eyes off of you, our one and only source of joy, our source of peace, our source of comfort, our refuge, the one that we go to to get rest in, to have peace in. And Lord, through this holiday season that's among us, Father, Lord, I pray, Father God, that though we be tested and tempted to get anxious and to, to get stressed, Father God, Lord, we just want to bask in your yes. peace. Yes. We want to be reminded by your Holy Spirit that it is not the way of the world that our minds should be set, but it is the way of the heart of you. Like David had a heart for God, Lord, make our hearts also warm to you, Father. Let us be discerning, Father God, in every aspect of our lives and our walk with you, even in our giving. Lord, give us wisdom yes, Lord. Lord, to manage that which you have so richly blessed us with. Yes, Lord. For what, what is it worth having the thousands, the hundreds, the millions, when yet we lack wisdom in how to manage it? So, Lord, tonight we ask for wisdom. As Solomon asked, Father God, you said that was the greatest thing that he could have ever asked. So everything else was given to him. So, Lord, today, we don't just want riches. Right. We want your kingdom. We want your purpose. We want your wisdom to have the mind of Christ. Yes. So tonight, we speak that, Father, to your people. We speak the mind of Christ over their finances, their family, over their workplaces, Lord, in every aspect of their lives, yes. Father. We thank you for that supernatural and divine wisdom that can only come from you. It's in the name above every name that we pray, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Come on up tonight and give cheerfully to the Lord. Well, tonight's going to be a little bit different. Thank you for receiving. Thank you for all your gifts and yes, donations. Yes. Oh God, we thank you for that support. And um, how many of love Thanksgiving season? Amen. All right, two of y'all. I love Thanksgiving season. Yeah. Not just because it's gobble gobble turkey season. <laughs> right, right. But I love it because this was the time that I got saved. Yes. Amen. And the Lord came into my heart. And I got saved at a church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yes. So I had to take your pastor all the way to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Anybody been to Louisiana? All right now. Yeah, all right. Woo. And we got any LSD fans? No? Okay, all right. We'll, we'll put your stuff over there. We'll there. But um, I came out of that church. I got saved at Jimmy Swaggart's church. Uh, SBN Network, if you've ever seen it. I got saved in his ministry in 1984. All right. And, uh, Glory to God. I can't play the way Jimmy Swaggart plays. <laughs> you know, one day, you know, I don't know if you know his testimony, but one day Jimmy Swaggart was a little boy, I don't know, seven, eight years old, brought up in church all his life. And then uh, he saw someone playing the piano at church, at his home church. And he said, Lord, if you give me that gift, Wow. To play the piano. I'll never play it in a honky tonk. Oh, oh, 
I'll never play it in a bar. I'll never play it in a club. And he didn't know anything about playing. He basically taught himself, or we should say, the Lord taught him. And uh, so this song that they do goes something like this.
Thanksgiving, amen, to be able to give thanks unto the Lord and publicly make an announcement because your testimony will actually be a blessing and encouragement to someone else. Yes. Yes. I know that a lot of times people, you know, they, they, they wonder, how can I witness to someone? What can I say to them that is going to impact them or change their heart or change their mind about what they think? And the simple fact is sharing what God's done for you. Sharing Amen. how God's changed your life. Amen. Sharing how you were once lost. Yeah. And you were on your way to a devil's hell. Right. But God right. rescued you. Yes. Amen. Now, if your life isn't changed, then there really isn't much you can share with someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But when your life has truly been turned around by the grace and the power and the love of God, that is the simplest of simplest ways. To share with someone the love of God. Amen. Because if God, I always say this to people I just speak to, if God can change me, yes. a stubborn, self-centered individual, God can definitely change me. Amen. 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 And God can still turn someone's life around. Amen. 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 So tonight, our, um, we have a, about three testimonies, amen, of those that are going to share this evening. And our first Runners up, hallelujah, is our brother Eddie. Amen. All right. He's going to come. He's going to share. Here at Livingstone, our revisiting visitors are here tonight. 
Our visitors, our visitors that are uh, seeing us on live stream either now or later on, yeah. want to welcome you, want to thank you, and I uh, want to say thanks to God, amen, for yes. this evening. Amen. But I want to thank God first amen. of all, amen, you know, because I'm thankful, amen. Who, yes. who is thankful here tonight? Yes. Yeah? Who is thankful, amen, that God, amen, did something in your life? Yes. Amen. Yes. I know that when I was in high school, about 17 years old, 16, 17, um, running with the crowd, getting into fights. Yeah. I know most of us didn't, yeah. you know, you know, but, you know, uh, used to think that I was a tough guy, amen, wore my shorts five sizes smaller, amen, <laughs> <laughs> amen. <Right. laughs> but, Little did I know, amen, that I I was lost, amen. I I, uh, I lived under a roof, amen, it's just me and my father. And my dad was, uh, era puro borracho, amen. Wow. He used to work seven days a week, but he used to drink seven days a week, wow. amen. How he did it, he managed to get up every morning and go to work. Yeah. Amen. And I live under that household where that's what I was being taught, amen. That was the way my brothers, my sisters, you know, doing all things under the sun and in drugs, whatever. And I said, I would never be like that. Amen. Amen. Well, at least I thought I would never be like that. Right, right, right. But little did I know that, you know, I got introduced to drinking and pot and uh, the, the lifestyle, I mean, when they push you. Calale, you know? That burden, amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One day, we, I was invited to a uh, a church in the West Side. And it was a Catholic church, but they had a charismatic movement going on. Wow. Amen? Mm -hmm. And they had a, a group of older people, and then they had a group for teenagers. And uh, there was this guy named Joey Cobillos. He looked different. He talked different. He didn't curse. He didn't bring you down. He, he was different. And he, I got invited to this little group and I said, well, yeah, I'll go. And the guy, he started talking about this guy named Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And uh, how Jesus can change his people. He yes. said, so how can that Jesus change me? You know, I'm, mm. I'm a crazy head and yeah. marijuana, whatever. Yeah. Doing anything and everything, cussing and fighting. And, but I, uh, he introduced me to Christ and uh, I gave my life to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. At the age of uh, 16. Yeah. Yeah. But I played it off as a joke. But I continue to stay, continue going until about the age of about 22. That's when I gave my life to Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, I could see the difference in my life and my marriage. I could see the difference where the TV, you know how the TV is now, you know, all the violence and all that stuff, and I said, you know what? I don't want that for my children. I don't want that for my family. I want, I want to change. I want, I want, a, I want a different aspect living in my household, a different harmony in my household. Amen. So uh, I, I turned to like videos and stuff like that, Christian videos and stuff. And then uh, I shared this with Pastor and my wife, and uh, uh, I would come up to the, the church pastor that I had years ago. And I would tell him, you know, hey, I don't want to see the TV anymore because of the violence. And you know what that guy said to me? Mm -hmm. You know, for all those out there that are listening, amen, that maybe somebody shattered your dream, amen. Yeah. But the guy said, uh, you're just a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? I couldn't believe I was hearing that through my ears from my senior pastor. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing, you know? Amen. Reading the word, praying, uh, praising God, 
you know, leading my kids, my family to uh, uh, a different aspect. Amen. And about three weeks later, we had a, a conference at the Victory Outreach. And uh, I remember uh, uh, Jimmy Strike, no. David Wilkerson. David Wilkerson showed up at our church to preach for that week. And he brought his own music, musicians. We had a spirit-filled week. And the very last service that we had was on a Friday morning. And it was a special service because he preached that very last service. And he was talking about how his favorite TV show was The A-Team. Amen? Nothing but violence. And he started speaking against the television. Started speaking against the VCRs. Amen? Started speaking about the violence. Amen? And my senior pastor looked at me and he says, you were right on it. Amen? Because I continued, amen, to do what I needed to do, amen, for my my spiritual life, amen? amen. And that's what we all need to do, continue right. doing. Right. Not for your wife, your husband, your sons, right. your right. spiritual life, amen. Amen. Right. Yes. Right. amen. Even though at a certain time I walked away from the things of God, God never gave up on me. Amen. God yes. always had me, amen. God always, you know, convicting. Yes. Uh, everywhere I turned, somebody was either talking to me or preaching to me or testifying to me about Jesus. Wow. Amen. But uh, I wanna, I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving weekend, not only because it's Thanksgiving, amen, but because I'm here tonight. Amen. amen. I have a wife, amen. a beautiful wife that loves me, yeah. takes care of me. Amen. I want to give thanks to my pastors. Amen. amen. Because they take care of their people. Yes, they amen. amen. They take care, amen, of the needs of the church. Amen. And not only the church, but their families. Amen. And other visiting people. Amen. Yes. And I'm thankful for that. I mean, this evening because God is so good. Yes. Even though I'm in this thing right now. Right, right, right. Amen. I'm not in the hospital. Right. Yes. I'm not in jail. Amen. 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 I'm not out in the streets. Hallelujah. And I want, I want to give a shout out to all those that walked away the backslider, amen, like myself. Yes, yes. Amen. There's still hope. Yes. Amen. There's still hope. Yes. And Jesus loves you just the way you are. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves you just the way you are. Amen. Just come to him. Amen. amen. And give him, give him a chance yeah. one more time. Yes. yes. When I came back I, I, and I said, God, Dios, pásame otro quebrado. Amen. Give me another chance. Amen. And I will praise you. Praise and I thank God. Here I am. Amen. 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 So, um, beautiful testimony, powerful, amen. You know, God, I think for each and every person in here, God has miraculously touched our lives, yes. Yes. has done a miracle. Amen. And like Brother Eddie mentioned, you know, sometimes our outcome in life and where we are doesn't match many times what we thought two right. years ago, how right. it was going to turn out, five right. years right. ago, how it was going to turn out. But... Through God's grace, mm -hmm. he gives us strength. And that's really what grace is. Yeah, yeah. Grace yeah. is not an advantage to go and yeah. do what we want. Right, right, right. right. So right. many have really warped mm -hmm. that word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why well, wonder grace? I can live how I want. Mm -hmm. I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. Which really grace is empowerment. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Grace yes. is really yes. empowerment on, to overcome evil. To Amen. overcome the temptations, yes. to yes. overcome the testings in life, yes. to overcome. Hallelujah. So yeah. if you really live by grace, you're not living a life of sin. That's right. That's yeah. right. You're not living habitually 
in the sheets with someone. Yeah, not your spouse. You're not habitually living in fornication. You're not habitually living, going and shooting up. You're not. It's not a habitual habit. Right. And so many of today's churches in general, just right. the body right. of Christ, the church of Christ, has really steered away from speaking the truth of yep. sin. Mm -hmm. God is coming. I heard this in one of my um, devotional times. God is coming for a bride. Yes, yes. Wow. And that bride, we are engaged. Beautiful. If you are a believer, truly a believer, you're engaged to Christ. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You're engaged to If you've ever been engaged, if you ever had someone in your life in some season, some point, maybe you're not with that person now, maybe, but you were once engaged to someone, would it have been fair for you or for that individual to go behind your back mm. and go sleep with someone else? Mm -hmm. no. Go flirt with someone else? Mm -hmm. What is the point of that engagement yeah. when you're not living pure for each other. Right. Yeah. You're not living loyal for each other. You're not living trustworthy yeah. for each other. If we are engaged to Christ, right. he's not coming for a bride, eventually a bride who is tainted. He's not coming for a bride who's been messing around behind his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's really what Many believers, I don't know that they are true believers, but many so-called believers right. have taken in vain right. is grace. Mm. Yeah. Right. Because right. Right. living under grace means you live in victory. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That means that you live not perfect, but you live to overcome. Grace helps you to overcome. Yeah. Grace helps you. Yeah. Through the power of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Now, yeah. you just don't want that level of grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you want the grace you've made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The grace that really isn't even biblical. Right. The grace that gives you permission to do what you're doing now, mm -hmm. what you've been doing for months, what you've been, some have been doing for years. Mm -hmm. Sleeping with someone who is not your husband or your wife mm -hmm. is sin. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. called fornication. Right. And if you're married and you're sleeping with someone, then that's adultery. Right, right, yeah. right. Come on. So we need to expose what the enemy is trying to trap us yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because grace is victory. Yes, it is. Great. You have grace. Yeah. yeah. I have grace. Yeah. Thank you. We Lord. have the power within us, which is the Holy Spirit. When we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit Lord God. breathes his life in us. Mm -hmm. And with that breath, we can, we can walk in victory. We yes. can walk yes. in supernatural yes. strength yes. Yes. to be able to walk away. God says to flee from the very appearance of evil. Watch out. So if that thing even looks a little weird, mm. you just walk away from it. You right. say, no, I can't. Right. 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 I, I can't do that. I can't, I, can't, I can't sin. I can't cheat on my fiance. I can't cheat. Because one day he's coming for me and I'm going to be his bride. Yeah. Male and female, we're going to be the bride of Christ. Yes, we, yes. Are the bride. we are engaged to him. <laughs> so tonight I encourage you. I encourage you as my son. I know he's walking nervously around. He's an ex runner up. Amen. Woo. He's coming. He's going to come. He's going to share his testimony. But I encourage you tonight to walk in the grace that was meant for you to walk in. Which is victory. Amen. Amen. God gives us grace for the seasons of life that we live through. Amen. But when you come to your breaking point, the big difference, because we've seen, me and my husband were sharing this the other night, we've seen people broken. Mm -hmm. We've seen lives where you, you just, everything shatters to the ground, and your, 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 head, your heart is heavy. You, you want nowhere else to turn or to look but to, to the heavens. But so many people that are broken, right. they don't go to God. Mm. They're broken, but they run to other means. Right. Yeah. They run into a relationship that wasn't meant for them. Yeah. They run into a, 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 a job that's working them seven days a week. You know, when God blesses you, he's not going to pull you out of his house. Amen. Right. When he really blesses you, he's not going to pull you out of the, 
meeting together, as the Bible says, right. do not forsake the coming together yeah. of the brethren, as right. many do That's in good. that day. Many do. That's good. And they make excuses for doing it. God's blessings are yes and amen, and his yes. blessings are for you amen. to have the opportunity to come together, to praise God, to sharpen each other, to encourage one another. That's And so tonight, I'm going to ask my son, Joshua, amen, to come on up. Amen. 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 Am
I'm not too sure about it. And she didn't know at the time. Well, we presumptually know at the time, but I had liked her and I had feelings for her, but I never wanted to share it. And I knew she wasn't saying I knew she wasn't. Yeah. Um, didn't go to church. Well, she said, well, she said she did go to church, but she didn't, wasn't into God. She didn't know God in her heart, basically. She wasn't reading the Bible, wasn't in prayer, nothing like that. And, yeah. um, and I knew it was a promotion to try and go out there. This was a Saturday, by the way, so at church right the next morning, homecoming ended at around 7 o'clock or so, and um, danced, and then the party was going to last until 10 or 11, something like that. And um, so I had presumptuously said, I don't know what it was, I just had a feeling that said, I said, no, uh, I, don't know if, I didn't tell I had church or nothing like that. He said, uh, I don't think I can go or whatever. And I never mentioned to my parents because I ended up not going. And I could, honestly, I could have easily gone, snuck off. I didn't have a car at the time, but I could have easily gone with them, mm -hmm. spent the night with them, and then come back later the next morning, all hung over, and nobody got noticed anything. So yeah. it, could have, it was very easy to get away with that. But mm -hmm. I ended up not going. And the only reason why I'm sharing this right now is because last week, her mom, her mom was one of those people that was involved in Scoop though, so she was in Scoop Chat along with our advisors, our adult advisors. So she would help, you know, getting supplies, getting food, all that good stuff. And um, last week, and uh, yes, last week she had posted something about her Instagram saying that uh, her daughter, Anna, was uh, pregnant. And she actually, it was her second child, she had a child right after, a couple months after, because after that homecoming, I never saw her again. And um, didn't think too much of it. You know, I would sometimes message, message her saying, hey, are you okay, anything wrong? And she said, yes, it's fine, it's fine. But then found out that she had, well, she had originally told me that once the year ended that she had no schools or whatever, but the truth is was that she was in labor. And she had, um, she had a fornication with uh, this guy that uh, was on the football team, I believe. And mm. next thing you know, she had to be pregnant. I think she had a boy. And then next thing you know, she's still um, with that same player. But um, also, her brother, who was also in student council, the same night he had gotten arrested because he was fighting and committed assaults on someone that was trying to. He was his girlfriend, basically a jealousy love triangle, and um, he had cracked the skull open, and he was a juvenile for at least, I want to say, eight to ten months. And um, once, and the only reason why I'm up right now is because a week ago she had said, my boy is finally out, and my daughter is kind of with another child, and I just think back to that time that... What would have happened if I had gone? Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah. why couldn't I go? Like, and yeah. at the time when I had went home that same night, mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, God, you never let me have fun. You never mm -hmm. you yeah. do things that I want to do. You know, right. sharing your yeah. family, man. Mom, Certain mom. Is, is not fun. You know, I want to do what I want to do. I was like, I said, why, why do I have to serve you and I get no benefits? Mm -hmm. That was my mm -hmm. answer at the time. All right, all right. <laughs> and, you know, as the years went by, I had graduated around 2020. So, about two or three years ago, and I've just been deeper and deeper as I go deeper into my walk of God and mm. get into my prayer life and yeah. get yeah. into my life. Yeah. Yeah. So many things that I couldn't yeah. explain to you. That was just one instance, but I thought that was the most important instance because um, a message that and I promise that I'm not trying to preach at all. But I'm not preach it! But I was watched, a couple of days ago, I was watching this YouTuber, his name, um, he's a pretty famous uh, pastor, some of you might know him, his name is Isaiah Salvador. Um, and I was watching one of his sermons a um, couple a couple of days ago on YouTube, and he his message was basically bringing young people, it was basically a, a revival church, and he was trying to bring in young people to get saved, get into the Word of God, things of that nature. And um, one of his messages that stood out with me was that, I'm not sure what the numbers were, but he had a statistic, a, a real statistic that in the history of the church, there is no, there is no less, excuse me, how do I phrase this? Less and less people, of young people, are coming to the church yeah. now more than ever. Yeah. Wow. 
like, wow, that is crazy. Like, in the history of human history, like a church history, you name it, like, the lowest amount of young people yeah. have not gone to church, have not even read the Bible, and the people that do go to church, the people that do self proclaim to them as Christian, don't even believe that the word of God is fully true. Mm. Don't even believe true. that in the core right. tenets right. that you know that Jesus is God, that the Holy Spirit is the real one, and things of that nature. Yeah. Some of the things that you would think that everybody could agree on. Right. right. And so mm. I had thought about that and I'm like, why is that? Why is that? And then later as I listened to her sermon, he said something of the nature that we have too many pastors today that Preach a watered down, lukewarm mm. gospel yeah. that doesn't resonate yeah. unless it's equal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I wasn't was trying to preach, but, um, yeah. but the reason why I mention this is because later on in that sermon, he says, too many, ever, too many of us, especially young people, serve Jehovah God. You mm. see, we put yeah. God into our love box Ooh. and then we take him out and rip our lives. All right. We serve right. Jehovah Butler. You make a little bell, every time we make a mess, and we want God to clean up that mess. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. serve Jehovah Genie. You have a Bible, mm-hmm. and we get up three verses. Mm-hmm. And he just came going, I don't know. Wow. Mm-hmm. This wow. is really convicting. How yeah. 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 And so, yeah. That's right. But, um, and so, I just can't fool myself and say, man, too many people just, especially me, like, and I, I think to myself, not only did God protect me from that, but I'm thinking to myself, and I have a little bit of regret, because if I was more open with my faith, could I have prevented that? Could I have said, hey, you don't have to do this. Like, I know a God that can give you an enormous wow. amount yes. of joy and happiness. Hey, Amen. I know God can give you. That's God. right. And I just keep thinking, come on. If I was just more open, could it, could it have happened? And, I just want to encourage everybody, not just young people, but everybody to don't be afraid to share your faith. Don't be afraid yeah. to stand out. If Amen. You talk like the Lord, you shout it. Mm. Mm. Oh, Tell it. Tell it. Right. I said, what? Right. We are called to make disciples. Yes, we are also called to get into our own walk of life and to yes. not rely on our pastor, our parents, our grandparents, right. anything like that. Right. But at the same time, once we get that passion that fire within us, if you don't want to save souls, then what are you doing? If you don't want to make disciples, if you don't want to save people from going to the depths of hell, oh, all right what are you trying to do? Yeah. And once I heard that, and yeah. it just kept bringing this in my head, I'm like, mm. now, you know, now more than ever, I want to just tell people, especially people at my work, people that I, that I might go to school with, people that I just see right across the street that I hang around with frequently, I said, man, if you just get to know me, you'll know about Jesus. You'll know Amen. About Woo. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, this is nothing that is more convicting and more powerful than telling someone that your sinful life, yes, um, it may not destroy you right now, but it's going to cost your soul. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. cost your eternity, your life. And although, you know, although people might look at us like how I used to and say, oh, well, you, you, you guys don't have any fun, you know, you guys are boring life, you know, you, all you do is serve God, and you know, what has he done for you? You're still in bondage, you're still in charge. Woo! Yeah. All right now, brother. Yeah, you are right, but at the same time, yeah. I got a problem. Oh, oh, oh. All right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you're looking at these intangible things that wow. don't matter, that don't mm. satisfy you. That's why you're constantly in depression. That's why you're constantly mm. walking. Tell it, tell it. Just empty and full of emotion. Wow. And right. You keep on looking to these other things of the world mm-hmm. that aren't significant. Wow. When there's a holy God, there's a holy Father that wants to save you, that wants to deliver you, that wants to yeah. set you free. Amen. Yeah. 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 So, I went a little time today, but, uh, <laughs> but I just wanted to resonate that to anyone that's watching, to anyone that's here. Don't be afraid to share your faith. Shine by the faith. Amen. somebody watching you know i never thought about that as you know obviously i played mm-hmm. drums and obviously i've been in the ministry and, you know a good portion of my life you know serving um serving this church but you know i always thought to myself no one really cares what i'm gonna do you know i'm just here to you know, i always go through the motions i'm like, just here to play a drum that's it but the more the more people that uh come out and say man you, you really hands up the whole 
fucking stinking yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, you have a, you have a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, brother. I'm like, wow, people are literally. And it's not even about, you know, having a pat on the back saying, oh, you did a great job because that's not why we serve the ministry. That's Amen. not why we're up here. Right. If you're up there, you probably should just go join a worldly music band or whatever. Mm. All that's right. The they want your money. They want your gratification. They want your yeah. Yeah. softness. But that's right. yeah. when it comes to serving Christ in this ministry, we do it for his glory and his honor. Amen. That's no right. How much recognition Amen. we have. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That um, that parents have gone through and going through everything that I've seen this church go through. Which yeah. is, I just know the comments is going to be really strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. That's right. Amen. That's the, uh, that's the uh, message I wanted to say. I, I hope it resonates with everybody with you. Um, Hallelujah. I'm not even sure how much I, how much time it's I It's all right. right. We're 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 right. Right. <laughs> just, just staying in your face, staying in truth, especially now because. Um, to, in today's world, there's just so many distractions out there that will yes, turn is. from where. Mm. And I deal with it every day with yep. work. There's people that don't, that don't even want to be with me anymore Ooh. because they know that I don't talk like them. I don't uh, hang around like them. I don't sound the way they do. I right. don't talk the way they do. So it's, uh, it's oh, a trial, right. but I know yeah. that my true you know, gratification is to All right. So yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just yeah. 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 That's right. Next, uh, can uh, you make it a little short? Because I, <laughs> <laughs> I all right, brother John. There's two more. If there he's, he's like he's done more ways than one. I mean, not, not just you know, from the you know, spiritual points, but he's his walls at home, he's so much like his father and his personality and everything. So, um, not in height, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, tonight I think we've all been blessed this evening, and um, I, I think we've all been ministered to in one degree or another. And so, um, we're going to, um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get ready, amen, to um, close out the service. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, all right. with that. And uh, let, let's give God a hand of praise. different places and I remember one place we went way up there on the north side <laughs> and um, we told the guy to meet us there and he got us there and we knew it wasn't God's will because when he said come it was it was late at night oh. and he's the, the fence to the car lot that he owned was locked Lock, yeah. and when he got there he said oh we're going to have to do another day because I forgot my keys I'm like, oh. 
So I said, John, let's go somewhere else. So somehow, some way, God blessed him with a beautiful car. I think he brought it to church tonight. He brings it all the time. Ooh, and uh, we thought we were going to have to co-sign. We thought we were going to have to do it in our name. Watch out. But because his record was so good and the favor of God yeah. over his life, Amen. he got it totally and completely Ooh. in his name. Go, John. He didn't need mom and daddy's help. That's right. That's a miracle right there. Amen. But he didn't need mom and dad to co-sign. Wow. He didn't even need mom and dad to give a down payment. He had his own down Hallelujah. payment. Hallelujah. And even today, he's so kind. He's so yes, he uh, gentle in his spirit that we have our older son who recently came back to the, to home with us. Our family, uh, we had no relationship for two to three years. For three years, I had no contact with my oldest son. And just earlier this year, he said, Dad, is it all right if I come home? Hallelujah. And so he's home with us. God's still working in his life. Amen. Because God's working in all of us. He but he lets my oldest, he lets my old, he lets my oldest son borrow his car sometimes. And uh, never complains, no, never murmurs. Wow. And uh, but that's just his heart. Amen. And uh, so Joshua, we're proud of you. Yes, and we, we are. Thank God for what God is doing. Amen, church. Amen. Can you just stand on your feet tonight as we get ready to eat some sweets? <laughs> All right. We got sweet bread at the church. I think some hot chocolate and coffee and whatever else. I don't know what you brought. But before we go home tonight, there's a song that I heard years ago. And it's so beautiful for this season. I know you know it. My Little Flavors sings it. It's been on the different worship teams sing it. And uh, if you know it, just sing it along with me. And uh, it goes something like this. Give that.
know, before church started tonight, I had somebody to pray for me. Brother said, Pastor, said, I pray for you. Just before we started church, I said, go ahead, brother. So pray for somebody right there. Because that's the gift of God. Your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, that grandparent, that significant person. So as we sing it one more time, sit your voice and say, Lord, bless us this Thanksgiving season. Bless my friend, bless my brother, bless my sister.